So today I will be presenting about my biggest challenge that I'm facing currently in my teaching career. Um, this has been an especially relevant topic as we move towards an e-learning model within my district. So probably in the same position that many of us are in, we are now having to reframe the way that we teach. For some districts, that means providing paper materials for students. For other districts, that might look like finding ways to socially, emotionally connect with students at a distance. Um, for my district, I am still expected to be providing full math and reading instruction and to deliver at least 60 minutes of direct instruction each and every day. I am on contract to work from eight to three and provide online lessons for my students and hold them all um, engaged. I don't wanna use the phrase accountable. We are not assessing or grading, but we are expected to reach out to students and have them participate with their classroom through Zoom meetings and online assignments. So a problem that we're currently facing as we move towards this model is that teachers are all in different positions in how much they've adopted technology into their daily curriculum. For our intermediate teachers, many of them had already adopted online flipped curriculum. For some of our upper elementary students, they were already pretty fluent and comfortable with using technology. And for our primary kids, they did not have as many opportunities to access the technology as the older students. We also have teachers with different levels of comfortability with technology. And so as we move into this new phase of teaching, what does it look like to provide an equitable education for all students K through 12? And so looking at our ISTE standards aligned with this challenge, I wanna be sure that a, a technologically informed educational leader can advocate for equitable access to educational technology, digital content and learning opportunities to meet the diverse needs of all students, that they can model for their colleagues the identification, exploration, evaluation, curation, and adoption of new digital resources and tools for learning. And finally, that they can use technology to create, adapt, and personalize learning experiences that foster independent learning and accommodate learner differences and needs. So as I was proposing solutions for this problem, I decided to look at it one ISTE standard at a time. So first looking at the ability to advocate for access to educational technology for all diverse students, um, for our district to really delve into this issue, that means creating a criteria for success for our teachers and what they should be providing. Exactly what is their expectations for instruction delivery? What would delivering Eureka Math instruction look like at a kindergarten level, at a second grade level? and making sure that all steering chairs for those grade levels are providing materials for teachers to then use so that we are all practicing the same instructional strategies. What do time allocations look like? What's an appropriate amount of time for a kindergartner to be logged on to an electronic school versus what's an appropriate amount of time for a high schooler to be doing it? And then acceptable programs of usage. As teachers, we all want to adopt as many different resources as we can and we have been so fortunate that many different programs have been offering free memberships and subscriptions, but we wanna make sure that we are fair for all students so that one kindergartner teacher is not providing an online reading program that another teacher is not. Looking for um, the ISTE standard of modeling for colleagues, the identification, exploration, evaluation, curation, and adoption of new digital resources, as we move towards this new phase of learning, we've had to really rethink how do we deliver a certain amount of instruction that we're so used to doing on paper and pencil or in person. Um, and so as a district, we can work towards providing pre-made scope and sequences so that teachers know exactly how much time they should be spending on a topic and where to access it in the curriculum. Making prepared lesson materials so that teachers can then access that. And again, we, we won't run into the issue where one teacher is delivering instruction that another teacher wouldn't. A means of communication with students. We have teachers who use Dojo. We have teachers that use the Classroom app, some that utilize email. And now that we're all communicating on the same learning platform, um, we can also really use it as a communication tool as well so that all students can expect the same type of communication from their teachers. And then finally, we can provide hotspots for students and teachers that do not have at-home internet access. Um, we, we are in a military community, but we're also in a very 
agrarian community as well. And so for a lot of people who are within our district, they have internet access when they're at school, but when they take that one-to-one -one device home, they don't have that same access. And so as a district helping to provide hotspots for them could make them able to participate and be successful in this e-learning transition. Finally, our last ISTE standard is the ability to create and adapt personalized learning experiences. So as a district, how do we address our exceptional students? We can provide amended IEP plans that fit this new district e-learning plan. I know that throughout these past two weeks, I have been in many Skype meetings regarding what will an IEP look like for a student who has 20 minutes of in-class service? What does that in-class service look like in a digital platform? We are also working towards how to get our paraeducator access to students. What would it look like for a student to have a conversation with a para? Would they be running a small group? We are discouraging any one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions with students. And so how do we provide a paraeducator for a student while also protecting them legally? We can also provide breakout Zoom sessions for small group instruction so we can still carry out the MTSS plans that we're working towards in the physical classroom. And then also by providing access to English as a second language of learners. So having our ESL paraeducators translate videos and making sure that we provide ample time for them to translate before we post them online for our students. So as we move towards this new transition in e-learning, um, this all sort of falls under the same umbrella of how can we provide an equitable education for our students?